Father, 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 I, I stretch my Hall of Wisdom, thank you so very much for tuning in to another amazing week. I want to tell all of you, come November, the first Saturday in November, we will be going once a month for the Hall of Wisdom. I am not happy about that announcement, but I need you guys to start preparing your heart. The first Saturday in every month, the Hall of Wisdom will be coming front and center again. So right now, I want you to stay tuned to this next clip. God bless you. It's John chapter 2. John chapter 2. I'm reading incidentally from the NIV. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. I hope I don't get kicked out on my first night. I want to tag this text as the Lord shall give power to preach. I want to talk about Jesus, the life of the party. Jesus, the life of the party. Will you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor we're talking about Jesus, the life of the party. I believe there are those of us who have really listened to the readings of John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. We understand this passage of scripture. It is a passage that is familiar. And one of the reasons this passage is familiar is because of the exciting storyline in which we find in John chapter 2, verse number 1 through 11. But not only is it because of the exciting storyline of John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, but it is also significant in the fact that this is the first earthly, uh, uh, this is the first miracle of Jesus' earthly ministry. I think that's the best way to put it. It is the first miracle of Jesus' earthly ministry. It is, it is, it is, it is not uh, the first miracle of Jesus, but it is the first miracle of Jesus' earthly ministry. You said, no, no, it's, it's, it's the first miracle of Jesus. Uh, it's the first miracle of his earthly ministry if we really look at it technically. Because you will discover uh, the first miracle of Jesus is housed in uh, Genesis. You will discover that in Genesis, the Bible says that after everything had been created, that God said, let us make man. And so when you look at the uniqueness of the usness that's mentioned in that particular passage, what you will discover is that when God says, let us make man, he is talking to uh, himself and the triumph head. He is talking to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us make man. And so if in fact Jesus was a part of that usness, then I think we'll all agree that the making of a man is a miracle. And so when you look at this text, you will know and note that this is Jesus' first uh, 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 um, uh, miracle as it relates to his earthly ministry. This, this is the launching pad for Jesus' ministry. This, this is his first platform for his ministry. 
and the Bible says that he uses and he chooses to use marriage as his first platform uh, to launch his miracle. Interestingly enough, he uses and chooses marriage to launch the platform of his earthly ministry. But then it doesn't seem so unusual for that to happen. After all, you will discover that even when uh, he is trying to uh, show and share the connection between Christ and the church, he, he uses the example of marriage and how the church is the bride of Christ. And so now he uses marriage as his earthly ministry. It is interesting because when you open up John chapter 2, uh, you will discover that it says in verse number 1 that on the third day uh, there was a wedding that took place at Cana. Now what you've got to understand that while it says on the third day, when you really look at it contextually, because in order to look at it contextually, you cannot just just isolate chapter 2 but you have to include chapter 1 when you include chapter 1 and discover what happens in chapter 1 and now it connects to chapter 2 while the text says the third day actually it is two days later from the occurrences of chapter 1 come on stay with me we're going somewhere really good together look at your neighbor say it was two days later from chapter one i need for you to understand brothers and sisters that this is important because what this says to me emphatically that no matter what is going on in your life many times what you've got to do is just keep living Lord have mercy. I said what you got to do is just keep living. You can't give up in one day because things are not the way you think they ought to be. Although there is nothing difficult going on in chapter 1 in this instance. But there may be some of you who things are going wrong in your chapter 1. Just keep going to chapter 2. And if things are going great in chapter 1, you cannot settle or cross your legs or think that it's all great and gravy and you have to do nothing else, but you got to keep living to chapter 2. As a matter of fact, when you tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, just keep it moving, that's what I'm really trying to say, keep it moving keep it moving and so now the bible says that on the third day which is in actuality two days later the bible says that jesus now goes to a wedding at cana he goes to a wedding at cana he goes to a wedding at cana verse number one explains to us that jesus mother was invited but then verse number two explains to us jesus and his disciples were invited and when i began to look at this here's where we tie this knot in to the bowl and when I begin to look at this I said to myself it is interesting that the name of the couple was never mentioned in the text we don't know if they were the Johnsons or the Franklins we don't know if they were the Smiths or the Jones we don't know if they were the Halls or the Jacksons all we know is that we can really call them the smart couple as a matter of fact matter of fact we give them a first and a last name we'll just call them very smart look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor they were very smart now you're looking at me in that tone of look that I don't like for people to look at me in when I'm preaching the best I know how to preach because you say what is all of this got to do with anything they are very smart what is all they are very smart because this couple has decided to do something that many couples and even many individuals refuse to do in the hour in which we live because verse number one says they invited Jesus mother that was okay but verse number two says they invited Jesus that's what made them very smart can I just impose on you for a moment to tell you that there are some people unlike the couple in John chapter 2 we can call them very smart as a matter of fact I know it's rude but it's the only thing that comes up on the screen of my mind we have to call them very dumb because anytime you decide to leave Jesus out of your life it is the dumbest thing you have ever done anytime you decide to invite everybody in 
saying except for Jesus that's just dumb will you look at somebody and tell them I'm a lot of things but I'm not dumb because I have invited Jesus in my life oh yeah something comes up again on the screen of my mind I, I'm, I'm, I'm old school and, and I remember in the Baptist church in which I was raised they used to sing this song on second Sunday when the e Hall special choir used to sing they said some folk uh, uh, choose riches and land some folk choose silver and gold these things they rub up but they forget about their soul I just Decided to make Jesus my choice. Will you just shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and tell them I decided to make Jesus my choice. Here's why I decided to make Jesus my choice. Because when I peruse the pages of this particular text, what I discovered is that if you make Jesus your choice, you will discover that he is actually the life of the party. <laughs> He is uh, the life of the party. And I think you ought to understand. I know you're having a wonderful time. I know you're celebrating. But he is the life of the party. Because as I set this up, let me help you to understand that this was uh, a an environment of celebration. They were happy. This couple was getting married. They were getting ready to uh, start their life. They were getting ready to enjoy themselves. They were getting ready to cohabitate without any interruption lord have mercy oh so and so now here in this moment of celebration the bible says that jesus becomes the life of the party now you say well why would you need uh, the life of the party well everybody know somebody gotta get the party started and somebody gotta keep the party going y'all ain't happy when you look at your neighbor and tell them somebody gotta get the party started but somebody got to keep the party going and I need for you to understand not all of the time are they the same persons because you got one person who can plan and get the party started but you got somebody else who was not included in the planning of the party who was not there when they sat down to get all of the schematics of the party together but yet when they get there this dull party that's getting ready to go south they have the ability to keep the party going i need for somebody in here tonight to know that the jesus that we said the lord of lord and the king of kings he has the ability to keep your party going Woo! shake hands with your neighbor and if your neighbor won't shake hands shake hands with yourself and tell yourself I'm, i want jesus because i need the party to keep going So when you look at the text, what you will discover is you say, well, why do you need someone to be the life of the party and keep the party going? Well, that, that was this optimist. That was this optimist whose name was Murphy, who came up with what is called Murphy's Law. I know some of you are looking at me as if though I just lied in the church. You said, well, this guy, he was talking pretty good at first, but now he sounds ignorant. He's saying that Murphy was an optimist. And he must not really understand what Murphy Law says. I do understand what Murphy Law says. I understand that the popular version of his law, which is not the actual version of his law, the popular version of his law says that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And you say, well, well how, how is he known? Uh, well, how can you call him an optimist? Well, I don't have time to go into that. I'm just telling you what they call him and what he answered to. He was an optimist. But here's what I need for you to understand. That just because things will go wrong does not cause you to be a pessimist. You've got to understand that's Bible. The Bible says that. The Bible says that in John. The Bible, Jesus says, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulations but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world y'all ain't happy he starts it off by saying Jesus says these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace he says in the world you shall have tribulations you know what that really means Jesus is saying anything that can go wrong will go wrong 
But Jesus is a is an optimist, and maybe that's what Murphy tapped into because Jesus says, "Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world." In other words, even though it can go wrong, I can keep the party going. And so, what you will discover, brothers and sisters, that when you look in the text, you need Jesus, you need Him, because He is the life of the party. He, in fact keeps the party going. How do you know that? I know that based on the movement of the text. There are three things that I see in the text. I want to toss at you and then we'll go home because I want you to come back tomorrow. I don't want you to say, he kept us there all night. I ain't going back. Hey, he kept us there long enough for two nights. Now I'm just giving you one night version. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. When you look at the text, what you will discover is that when I read this text, I understand that right after verse number two, when we discover that Jesus is invited, I discovered why he is invited and why it was a smart decision for him to be invited. Because in verse number, uh, uh, when you look at uh, verse number two, it tells us that Jesus is invited. Hey, but watch this. Uh, 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 but when you look at verse number three, you discover why it's important to be invited. And so here's why you need Jesus to be the life of the party because the first thing that I see in the text is what I'd like to call a devastating incident. A devastating incident because in verse number three, look at what happens in verse number three. When the wine was gone, when the wine was gone when the wine was gone this is this is not just uh, this is just not a, 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 a small issue a problem this is a major problem in that day in time that this is a major problem because the wine is gone so the wine was a was a, a necessary ingredient for celebration because when the wine is gone it signifies that the celebration is coming to an end not only when it is gone but, but even when the wine goes from one level to another level it indicates that the celebration is coming to an end not only is it an indicator of the celebration coming to an end but when you read traditions when you read antiquities what you will discover is that your party was raided y'all ain't happy your party was raided and if you didn't have enough wine and enough food and enough everything then people would, would have a mean saying as a matter of fact, I read also that it was not just a matter of being raided, but it was also a legal affair. Because if you uh, called somebody to come to your wedding and you were not prepared, they could uh, uh, come, come against you legally for this. And so when I look at this, I said, oh Lord, this is more than I ever thought about. Uh, the wine is run, not running out, the wine had run out. And, and come on, okay, 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 okay. I, I understand, I understand, I understand, I understand, I understand. I understand. I understand. You say I don't, I don't, I don't care nothing about all of that uh, 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 Galilee stuff. I don't, care, I don't understand. Okay, well let me let me tell you how you understand it. Uh, if somebody got married today and uh, they decided that they want to have that their wedding at the church, but they want to have their reception somewhere else. Many times, the reason why they don't want to have that reception at the same place that they have the wedding is because of a wine issue. Y'all ain't happy. Because they understand we can't pop the bubbly at the church. They understand that Barcotti and, and, and Hennessy is not invited at the church. They understand that you can't have no secrets at the church. You get it? I, I'll call your brand in a minute. I'm just running through a few here. So you, it's a wine issue, and people don't wanna. People try to separate the church from the wine, and so now those of you that understand that it's a wine issue, you understand that socially the party lasts as long as the wine does, because wine has an impact on people. Wine makes people feel funny when they're usually mean as a junkyard dog. Wine make people speak truth to power that usually is shy and timid because I heard an old man say to me one day a, a drunk body speaks a sober mind. 
The Bible, the Bible says it's an incident because not the wine has is running out, but the wine has run out. Okay, so that doesn't work for you because you don't drink. Praise the Lord. Good for you. I'm, I'm with you 100%. But here's the deal. Even for those that don't drink, you need to understand that figuratively in your life many times, the wine has run out. When was the last time you smiled? When was the last time you were happy? When was the last time you celebrated anything? When was the last time you uh, uh, skipped and, and then clicked your heels like everything was wonderful? And the reason why you haven't done that because in your life the wine has run out. Lord have mercy. But I came to preach to somebody tonight to tell you that even though the wine has run out because Jesus is the life of the party, you get ready to get drunk again. Lord have mercy. Shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off and tell them Jesus is the life of the party and you getting ready to get drunk again. You getting ready to smile again. You getting ready to shout again. You getting ready to run. I want to submit and suggest that some of y'all better go to the gym tomorrow because after this meeting, I prophesy that you're going to run the building like you ain't ever read it. Not because I'm here, but because Jesus is the life of the party. And I just came to let you know that he want to keep the party going. I want to thank you again for tuning in. My God, it went so fast, but that was just the first half. I want you to tune in next week, same time, same channel. God bless you.